as Japan's occupation had become widespread during World War II, U.S. Army General Douglas MacArthur began an island hopping campaign called Hitting Them Where They Ain't, which essentially meant taking smaller, less fortified islands one at a time as a means to gain control. Now on September 15, 1944, U.S. military forces landed on the island of Morotai and so ensued the battle for the island. On January 14, 1945, the Japanese were cleared of the island, 870 Japanese were killed and 10 were captured. 46 Americans lost their lives on Moritai and 104 were wounded. As a result of the battle for Moritai, Japanese, American and coalition forces left behind many clues of their presence. We have made the journey to this remote island to meet with the foremost authority on the military history here and to give him a metal detector to further his legacy. Hello. <laughs> Salama pagi. Oh. <laughs> we are here with Mr. Mulis and I have a gift for him. <laughs> I promised him I would come back. I promised him I would bring him a metal detector. So here oh, it is. <laughs> oh, wow, detector. Yes. Wow. Oh, terima kasih banyak. Okay, so we try it. <laughs> so through my friend who was doing the interpretation last time, I told her to tell him when I make a promise, if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm a man of my word, I do it, and I did it. <laughs> so he's very happy, he's very excited. We're going to go out in the jungle. We have two days, we're going to see what we can make happen, you guys. I'm really interested in, in seeing maybe we can find something really cool. I'm not an expert in metal detectors. We'll have to do some adjustments and stuff with the, with the equipment, but, uh, but this is cool, and he's really happy. So let's see what we can find, you guys. It's really interesting. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think uh, like low sensitivity is better, mm -hmm. and then just uh, sweeping. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yang yeah. jadi bikin sensitif, ini kan sensitifnya. Ini. Bikin di low lebih gampang mau dapat. Kalau ini, dia lebih terlalu cepat. Iya. If the sensitivity is too high, it seems to go off on everything. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so, it's a metal. Okay. He said that really thank you for you. He really respect everything that you did for him. And even that he stayed in a very remote area, this is very far. No, oh, yes. But still somebody care of him. Yes, of course. And support him. So mm -hmm. he can do and try to find this is like a legacy to uh, the young generation and for the next for Indonesia. Yeah. So thank you very much. Yeah, of course. It's good promotion also. Uh, if people come out here for yeah. diving or something, then they should definitely stop here. So. Uh, Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So he tries mm -hmm. here to, to explain that um, government now they, they make a road so they like a birded area. So he tried to find something interesting so the government may maybe pay attention to keep that area as a historical place. Mm. Like that. So try if he can find something, maybe it's like a proof that's mm -hmm. a real good place and then there's an area they have some uh, steel artifact or something from the Second World War. Mm -hmm. We are on our way to this uh, Nakamura waterfall area and I'll explain more of that as we go. But we stopped here, we're borrowing some shovels, I think, in case we need to dig something. And this is squid, yes? No, it's not. Baby, it's not animal. Oh, what is it? It's 
It's some type of snack that they made out from cassava root. Oh, so almost like a chips or like potato right. chip kind of thing. They, they eat it with uh, breakfast, with coffee, with milk, with tea. So Interesting. She said, I can't just eat it just like that. Ah. Oh, here comes the shovel. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> So I'm going to try it. It's like bread. They're bread. Yeah. No sweet. Plain. No flavor. Plain. It's just like eating just plain bread. Bread. Like a breadstick with no yeah. no. Nakamura was an Imperial Japanese Army soldier that was sent to Moritai during World War II in 1944. Shortly after he arrived on the island, the Allied forces arrived and he was separated from his group. He lived alone in the jungle, evading capture throughout the conclusion of the war. The area he lived in was near an Indonesian military air force base and aircraft continued flying overhead long after the war had ended, but Nakamura remained in hiding fearing capture and without knowledge of the outside world. Locals knew of his presence and gave him food occasionally. He was eventually coaxed out of the jungle and returned to Japan on January 8th, 1975 after nearly 30 years. So we are on the way to where Nakamura was kind of, I guess, rescued out of the jungle or coaxed out of the jungle. So they put up this statue here, kind of in honor of him. Uh, I can't read the plaque because it is not in English, but anyway, it's interesting. It plays kind of a key role, I guess, to this village. So we are about to embark on a, I think a short journey. I'm not sure how far of a journey this is, but we're going to a waterfall and this is where Nakamura was actually living. So it's going to be interesting. He's never been able to bring a metal detector into that area. So he's super excited. He is very optimistic that he may find something because it really hasn't been searched. Not in this way anyway. So let's go check it out. You guys, if we find anything, we are definitely going to show you. We will be very excited. So, okay, let's okay, go. <laughs> let's go. Wow, this is an amazing waterfall. I've seen a lot of waterfalls in my day, but this one is very aesthetic. The way that the water kind of cascades on both sides. It's really beautiful. It looks like some kind of like a botanical garden or a Japanese garden or something. It's really amazing. Very, very, very beautiful. But this is the area where Nakamura was living for all those years. So we are going to be checking around as you already know. Hopefully we can find something of interest, but we're going to be climbing up, 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 and I'm assuming that there's going to be more cascades and more waterfalls the further we go. So I have no idea how high this is gonna go, but this is really beautiful. This is really amazing. It's like this sheer wall right here. It's got some holes and things in it. It's amazing.
This is incredible. Wow. Wow. So you guys, I am told that this hole here was actually dug out by the soldier Nakamura and he would go in there and he would rest, sleep or whatever. Uh, nobody could see him. He could see anybody, any enemies coming up this way. And it was just a nice hidden area, not exposed to the elements. So we're gonna search this area with the metal detector because this is where he basically lived. There may be some artifacts still left behind by the Japanese. And of course, uh, we're gonna go up a little bit more also and check for some more stuff. So that, that hole is natural, but he actually dug it out so he could get deeper inside, more shelter from the elements and that. So really, really interesting. <laughs> and Mr. Mulis is up in there. Yeah, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> very cool, yeah, very cool. This is amazing, this waterfall area. These rocks are not that slippery also. It's kind of surprising. We're just trying to keep up with Mr. Mulis because he's so excited with the metal detector. He's just running around and like working all these areas. This amazing, looks like Japanese bonsai. Wow, really, really cool. I don't know if you can see him back there, but he's running around. He's like a little kid with a new toy. I hope we can find something, that would be really cool. <laughs> So Mr. Mulis is checking this field and he has a hit over here. So we're walking over here to see what he's got. So an amazing day today. The waterfall was really beautiful, very scenic, one of the most beautiful waterfalls we've ever been to. We did scout that area for artifacts with the metal detector. We didn't find anything. It was kind of a long shot, but we did try. Afterward, we put the metal detector to the test in that cleared field, and it worked really, really well. We, I didn't show it on film, but we found like four or five nails and it was picking up on wire. And then we found two projectiles separated from each other, two separate instances, looked like M16 rounds. And then we found a larger cartridge from a much larger caliber weapon, some type of machine gun. So the metal detector is working flawlessly, very impressed with it. And we had a lot of fun. We could have stayed out there for a long time, but it was getting late. So tomorrow also, it sounds amazing, two caves, one cave is where the Japanese hid from the Americans. Bats and birds inside. No idea what we're going to find, but we're going to check it also for artifacts. And then there's a second cave afterward that's easier access, but there's something very, very interesting that they said that they seen in the cave. And we're bringing our snorkel equipment, if that gives you guys any clue. So you're not going to want to miss that. Dinner tonight looks amazing. We have a fried fish. We have chicken. 
vegetables, rice, and of course, spicy sambal. So we're gonna eat, and that is it, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.